Yo, what's up? This is your coach, Renz, and first I want to apologize for missing out on Tuesday's live. I just opened up Smoking Phoenix Cigar Lounge, and I thought that because businesses usually start a little slow, that on Tuesday, this this past Tuesday, 8 o'clock, I didn't need anybody to sit in the shop with me, and I've been able to do the video. But it just so happens that a whole bunch of people walked in right before 8 o'clock, after I got everything set up. And we weren't able to do the live show. So know that if I'm unable to do the live show on a Tuesday, that within a few days, I'll do it this way. Now, I tried to do a live show yesterday, but I just couldn't. Every time I got ready, somebody came in. So we're just going to do it this way. So it may be some stops and pauses as I go through it. Uh, for those who want to ask the question, I'll go ahead and answer it. Yes, at Smoking Thing Cigar Lounge, 5385 Five Force Trickham Road. That's my new cigar lounge in Stone Mountain, Georgia. A uh, couple doors down from the popcorn shop, Uncle Ren's Popcorn. You can order popcorn there. But if you're in, in town, you like cigars, come talk to me. And we can have a deep conversation. Uh, I'm smoking an Alex Bradley Black Market right now. It's a really nice cigar. Notes of uh, leather and coffee and nuts and things of that nature. It comes in right around $10.50. So, but let's get started. So last time, so today we're doing Genesis seven and eight and we're going to take it chapter for chapter because people say we need to read our bible in order for us to understand so maybe the holy spirit would then talk to us and we'll be able to know the truth well let's look at what these books have to say so starting with chapter seven and mind you last week we did chapter five and six it says that the lord said to noah go into the ark you and your whole family because i have found you righteous in this generation take with you seven pairs of every clean animal a male and its mate and one pair of every kind of unclean animal a male and its mate and also seven pairs of every kind of bird male and female to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth now interesting here says that told Noah and his family to go into the ark forget everybody else because Noah was the only one who, they, who, who he found righteous. So, mind you, there are small babies, teenagers, at this time frame. Not one three-year-old was righteous. That God had to murder the three-year-old. That he had to murder, you know, the, the, the woman who was just taking care of her family. That Noah's nieces and nephews and cousins and all these people, none were righteous enough. Because previously he said that everybody had violence and wickedness on their mind constantly. How does a three-year-old who does not even know good from bad, right from wrong, is walking around with wickedness on their mind every day? That doesn't work. Come on. Are you telling me Noah? 800, 900-year-old Noah what, didn't have any wickedness in his heart? Because we'll find out later that as soon as the flood was over, Noah planted a vineyard, drunk him some wine, and passed out butt-ass naked in his camp. But that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem. The problem was what he did afterwards. And we're going to get to that one uh, in, in, in this video or, in, or a later video. Right? So, he's saying he's going to take seven kind of every clean animal. and I mean, seven kind of every unclean animal. What happened to the two? Two of each kind of animal. Now we're taking seven of the unclean animals. Why? Because we know this guy loves a barbecue. So there's going to be some sacrificing later. Poor little animals survive a whole flood. Now you got to be sacrificed. Right? And then all the birds. Now, here's the thing. He's saying he's taking in all these animals, all these unclean animals. This book supposedly is the first book. And if we went chronologically... How would Noah know what an unclean animal is? Because prior to this, everybody was vegetarian. Prior to this, in Genesis 1 and 1 and 2, he said that he gave every tree, every herb, every leaf, all the fruit for everything, every animal to eat, every person to eat. So how would he know what a clean animal is if he's only been a vegetarian? He wouldn't know that another animal is an unclean animal because at this time frame, they don't eat animals. 
So how, what makes it unclean? And the rules of clean animals and unclean animals haven't been written yet in Leviticus. So that don't make sense unless this book is written after Leviticus, unless this story is saying, hey, you know what? We don't have a beginning story. Every other religion has a beginning story. We don't have a beginning story. Let's make one up. And since everybody else has a flood story, let's get us a flood story. Because you don't know what an unclean animal is at this time frame. No, it wouldn't have known. Mm -mm. Show sure wouldn't. Mm -mm. So seven days from now, seven days from now, I, this is the Lord speaking. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will wipe out from the, earth, from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Now this guy who poofed everything together, all of a sudden now I got to make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights in order for him to wipe out everything. That's very drastic, very drastic for this poof God who can just poof everything. And the thing about it is, scientists have shown that it would take more than 40 days and 40 nights of constant rain to flood the entire planet in the way that this flood is supposed to happen and the way it is going to happen. So Noah did all the Lord, all that the Lord commanded. Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. 600 years old. What happened to man's time will only be 120, 120 years. Yes, that's not true. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and of all creatures that moved along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the flood, after seven days, the floodwaters came upon the earth. Now, in order for every kind of animal, that would mean that 10 pair of every animal had to be loading on this ark every 10 seconds. Now, every second, 10 pairs of animals. Sorry, every second, 10 pairs of animals. That's not happening. I mean, the sloth don't move that fast. And I'm wondering, did the kangaroo swim? He said he brought all the animals. If he can poof a kangaroo there, then why didn't he just poof everything to be out of existence? And if the kangaroo swam there, kangaroo can't swim that far. Sloths don't swim that, swim that far. Koalas won't swim that far. How'd all them animals get down? It's not Pangea. Even if it was Pangea, that's a long, long, long way to go. And them animals ain't there. So, we know that this is BS. No, uh, so, all the animals are on the boat. And, the, and um, after seven days, the flood waters came. So, it started raining. You can imagine, based on this story, they hadn't seen rain before. Because remember, said God had forgotten to make it rain, so he caused the mist to come up. So, all of a sudden, people are seeing water coming from heaven. They don't understand it. But they're saying that this is rain and they're like, oh shit, the firmament, the water, the blue up there is leaking water because they thought it was water above them. Because in Genesis 1, we hear that he separated the waters in the higher firmaments and the lower firmament, the vaults of heaven. In the, um, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of, of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the and the floodgates of heaven were open. The rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. You know what this sounds like? Because we know that the earth doesn't erupt with water. We have hot springs, sure, but it doesn't erupt with water. The floodgates, they believe all this water just erupted. It sounds like how scientists have shown that the way that the Persian Gulf was created is that when that little piece of land between, uh, 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 that li the little piece of land right there was blocking off the Indian Ocean and as if something happened that burst that piece of land and right there at Oman or Yemen is one of them that's right there that the water just flooded through that the, the Indian Ocean flooded this Mesopotamian area and that would give the appearance of the earth bursting its fountains and maybe a big storm is what created that that's more than likely what happened here on that very day, Noah and his son, Shem, Ham, and Jesuphat, together with his wife and their wives and their three sons, entered the ark. 
But it's interesting. They know the exact date that this stuff happened. He gave the exact date, right, that all this stuff happened. And they entered the ark. And they had with them every wild animal according to his kind, all the livestock according to their kind, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to, according to its kind, and everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing as God commanded Noah. Then the earth shut him, and then the Lord shut him in, shut him in. This is really repetitive. I mean, you already said that they went in the ark. Why couldn't you just say they went into the ark? It's like you're trying to fill space. Like you're trying to have runtime or something. But you got to be repetitive. But the interesting thing here is that then the Lord shut him in. Did Noah not have a way to shut the door? He didn't have like a pulley that he could pull the door. The Lord had to come and shut the door. That makes no sense. God was there like, okay, y'all in? All right, get in, get in the car. I'm going to close the door. I'm going to close the door now. Yeah, that's dumb. So for 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And the waters increased. They lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark float, floated above the surface of the water. What about the ducks? Ducks can float on water. What about the otters? They can float on water. They don't need to be in the ark. What about all the animals? Wouldn't that be more of the two? Because those animals would just keep rising with it. They rose greatly on the earth. And all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Now, a cubit is about three feet, right? So that's about, um, yes, yeah, about, no, the cubit is about 18 inches so 15 cubits will would be about 22 feet so we're talking 22 feet above the highest mountain what's the highest mountain even back then around 4500 bce which is when this is supposedly had happened everest still would have been the highest mountain everest at that time frame was still such a high mountain that no animal no person could live at that height they would freeze to death and there's not enough oxygen you can't build a fire so how are they surviving at such a high altitude is there a magic bubble around the ark that we don't know about because it doesn't say it here so you can't extrapolate it and just make it up and say well the lord works in mysterious ways and since the lord is protecting noah there must have been a magic bubble a a fountain of oxygen pouring in if God didn't want man at no point in time because he's omnipresent and he's throughout all times and no, we will figure out the science, he would have had in his book. And the Lord provided a protection of oxygen so that the animals wouldn't freeze, so that Noah wouldn't freeze, so that a fire could be built. Nothing is in this book that says that. Therefore, they're basing it on, basing it on their knowledge of the world that their highest mountain they could easily get up to the top and have air that there's vegetation that grows at that highest mountain and to only be 22 feet above it they know that they would be able to survive but because they didn't know about Everest they didn't know to add that in hell because they didn't know about Mount Kilimanjaro they didn't add that in because they didn't know about Mount McKinley they didn't add that part in because they did not know that the earth was bigger than their little area they didn't know to add that in otherwise they would have known we got to make this sound infallible we can't just say the highest mountain because this is the highest mountain you can't breathe up there but they didn't know that so let's look at it today and, and if your god was omnipresent you guys all knowing he would have known that we would know that at some point you can't live above mount everest you can't live at that height. But they think you they want you to believe that you could have, that Noah could have. That's what they want you to believe. 21. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swam that swarm swam yeah, sorry, swarm all over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had breath of life in his nostrils died 
every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals. See how redundant, how they keep repeating the same thing? Animals and all the creatures that moved along the ground and the birds were wiped out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. And the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. So if that's true, if all the people died and all the animals died, and why is it that the Minoan civilization was there before, during, and after the flood? The Chinese dynasties were there before, during, and after the flood. The, Sumer the, the king's list was there during, during the flood, before the flood, and after the flood. So were the Egyptians, and everybody else was there before all this stuff happened. Why are they, their histories are still valid during this time frame? They don't have a break. They don't say there was a time when we were all destroyed and then from migration we left, our forefathers left an area, a land that is unknown to us and came and settled here in what is today Mexico, in what is today the Americas. None of that story is here. Where is that story? So now it's also saying that the waters were flooding the earth for 150 days. So the whole earth is covered for 150 days. We got 40 days. And 150 days even if we didn't add those two together to get 190 days we are still looking at the fact that Noah could not have possibly had enough food on that boat for all the animals and them to exist for 190 150 days that they did not have enough grain enough vegetation to live that long they and, and what was they doing they was shoveling shit all day they're shoveling shit all day. And they got bacteria growing. They got parasites. They got all the viruses. No one got sick. Nothing happened like that. This story makes no sense. Now, mind you, if the earth flooded to the highest mountain, that means all the way up to uh, the, the, the... And this shows that they don't know what they didn't understand uh, a lot about the earth at that time frame. If the earth flooded higher than Mount Everest, 22 feet, above Mount Everest, then another aspect that this story, to this story that does not make sense, is the fact that that would mean all the fresh water would mix with all the salt water. That would mean every animal in the sea is going to die. That means that every plant tree that's on the earth is going to die. So there's no fish, or no it's not fishing and catching fish, plus they're not eating meat yet. They're not eating meat yet. They're gonna eat meat later. They're not eating meat yet. So they're not fishing to eat the seafood. They're not having that. They're not pescatarians here. So all this stuff is supposed to be going on. All this fresh water mixing with salt water, killing all the plankton. Plankton provides 80% of our oxygen on the planet. So not only are they at the highest point of Everest, but they're also killing the animals that provide oxygen on the planet. Yeah, you can say there's only eight people, but sorry, you're killing the, the whole atmosphere is dying right now. This scientifically makes no sense whatsoever. Doesn't at all. So let's go to chapter eight. I mean, yeah, chapter eight. So there are 150 days on this boat or 190 days. But God remembered Noah. So God just did like a worldwide genocide and, and, and he forgot that Noah was there. He forgot. Oh, and let me go back a little bit. Sorry, forgot something. Since God forgot, I can forget. These people didn't understand the, the size and the girth of the earth and I'm gonna get back to this in a minute. I want y'all to think about that. Currents, ocean currents, water currents. If Noah was on a boat and it covered the entire planet, the boat would be moving, right? The, the, the waves would be moving the boat. It wouldn't be in the same spot. It wouldn't be in the same area, right? So hold on to that thought for a minute, all right? But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. He sent the wind which would create waves. And as the water recedes, it would create waves. 
Noah's boat is floating on these waves. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of heaven, which is these people believing that there's a way to turn off and on water, rain, like a faucet. Remember, people up until about 200 years ago, actually more likely about 150 years, didn't understand weather patterns. They thought that they could you know, pray for rain. That they, they thought that they could like entreat the gods and sacrifice in order for rain to happen. They, they, they thought that God controlled rain. They didn't understand high pressures and low pressures or, you know, combining and, and warm air and cold air combining and creating storm clouds. They, they didn't know this. They didn't understand that. Right? And we only recently gained, like, full knowledge of how this works. So the rain, um, the rain stopped from the sky. The waters receded steadily from the earth. At the end of a hundred and, and at the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. It had gone down, right? And the seven and on the seventeenth day of the seventeenth month, the ark came to rest on the mountain of Ararat. Remember when it said that God caused the wind to blow and then currents and the, the, the waves would move, right? The water receded and the water would be, the waves would be coming, moving around. And even during a storm like this, waves will be moving. This shows they don't understand the, the earth at all. Because if you're on a boat, even without a sail, you're on a boat, even without a rudder, then the boat, because he didn't tell them to make a rudder. The boat's not anchored. He didn't anchor the boat. It's just floating. Therefore, it's an impossibility, improbability at the least that this boat settles on Mount Ararat in the same area of the planet. If a boat's been floating for 150 plus days, it's not going to settle next door. He would have been in China, Australia, America, somewhere else. He would have been far away from Mount Ara. He would not have ended up in the same area that he left. That's not gonna happen, sorry. The waters continue to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountain became visible. So I'm guessing they're saying the boat came to rest on the top of a mountain, but he couldn't see the top of the mountain, which was only 22 feet below him because that's all, that's all the 15 cubits were. So that the water receded, he rest, it rested, but I guess he still see water. You know, if you can see the top of one mountain, then you would know that, you're, that there's some land. But it took a little bit while longer for them to see the tops of the mountain. But it came to rest on the top of the mountain, but it took him some more time to see the tops of the mountain. That don't make no sense, does it? You rested, the boat came to rest on the top, but it, you couldn't see the tops of the mountain. So after 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. So it says that the raven kept going back and forth until the waters dried up. So did it stop? Did it not come back? And you only got two ravens. So like you're messing up the whole fact of ravens being able to exist. Oh no, wait, it said it has seven. My bad. It did say two, but then it says seven. So. I guess you can lose a raven, not too bad. Then he sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch because there was the, because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back inside of the ark. But wait, earlier in verse seven, he said he sent out a raven. It kept going back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. So I thought the water dried up and the raven was going back and forth. Only the dove came back. The raven was like, what the hell I need to come back here for? Yeah. Who's writing this, please? I, I need to know who's writing this. I, I need to know. We need to have a conversation. I should have been there and be like, look, that, that, that part don't make sense. You need some editors. You need some editors. Said that he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in his beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. 
so there's a window right there and if I look out the window and my boat is resting on the top of a mountain I can see the ground when I climb Stone Mountain and I look from Stone Mountain I can see the ground I can see Atlanta I can see the surrounding areas I can see the base of the mountain this don't make sense you can see when the ground is dried up you don't need a dove to see when the ground is dried up <clears throat> and the worst part the worst part of this one it says that he plucked a freshly a fresh olive leaf evidently they don't understand agriculture a little bit in this whoever was writing this was just a writer not a not a farmer if the earth's been flooded the salt water has mixed with the fresh water an olive tree will not grow that fast it won't grow back that fast but I guess they want to believe that an olive leaf will grow back that fast you see people don't think about this when they're reading it when they're hearing this preached in the church they don't think about the fact that an olive tree will not grow fast enough in that time frame for a dove to get a freshly picked olive leaf and the water has been contaminated with seawater all over the planet. That's salt. That means that you okay, let me put it this way. Back in the day when 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 like the Romans would, would sack a country and if they want to devastate that country, they would salt the earth so that they can't grow food, making them dependent upon the Romans. This is not just something the Romans did. Cultures all over the world did this same thing. If they wanted to destroy you and make you dependent upon them, or they just want to punch the hell out of you, they would salt your farm area, your ground, so that you can't grow anything. Now, mind you, the majority of the water on the planet is salt water. That means that all over the planet, the ground has been salted, so therefore, shit ain't growing. It ain't growing. Sorry, it's not. Go check, go go research that. Go look that up. You go see. You go see, then come back to me. And then he waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. But this time, it did not return to him. You know it's stupid. If you sent out a dove, it brought you back a, a freshly plucked olive leaf. That way you know that the ground is good to go. Get out the boat. You're good, man. But you're going to wait seven more days because you wanted to be with the olive. Oh, the dove didn't come back. And how many doves did you have? You had seven. So now there's a, a widow dove. There's a widow dove up here. Poor little widow dove. Or widower dove. I don't know if he's sending a male or a female out, but then you got a dove. You got you got six doves and one. I mean you got five You got you got five pairs of six pairs of dove doves and one left over. That's just something to throw in. Verse 13 of this ridiculousness of what's wrong with this Bible. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 600 year and, and first year, 601, you could have just said 601, the waters had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Does Noah's eyes not work? I'm just saying. You, you can't see that the earth is dry. You, 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 this don't make sense. You can't see it. I mean, I can look out. It's dry outside right now. It was raining the other day, but it's dry right now. I can just look and see it right there. Right? Then, Noah said, then God said to Noah, come out of the ark. You and your wife, and your sons. and Who the hell else was on the boat? Who was I, Who is he going to call? Do you have to say, hey, you come out and you come out. You're not genocided, everybody. Then all you had to say was, hey, come out the boat. There's only those people there. There's the eight people. That's it. That's it. Ah, who wrote this? Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you. The birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase the number on it. Hey, God, instead of destroying our, everything and all the animals, if you had just poofed man out of existence and left Noah, you could have did that like in a second since you did everything else in six days. 
You could have just left all the animals alone. You didn't have to salt the entire earth. You didn't have to kill all the animals in the water. You could have just left all the animals to be there and then they wouldn't have to come out two by two and multiply again. They wouldn't have to, the polar bear ain't got to make his way back, you know, to the Arctic. The, 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 the penguins ain't got to make their way back. The kangaroo ain't got to make their way back. The tigers ain't got to make their way back to India. You could have just poof man and then been done with it. But you, you, you're a drama queen. I just realized it. You're a drama queen. Got it. Got it. Got it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his and his wife and his son wives. All the animals and all the creatures that moved along the ground and all the birds, everything that moved upon the land came out of the ark, one kind after another. Of course they came out. You've been shitting in this boat for like a, oh, almost a year. It stinks. It got bacteria and everything in there. Yeah, you're coming out. If it actually really happened. But we know it didn't. Oh yeah. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and take and taking some of all the clean animals and the clean birds, he sacrificed the burnt offering on it. Dude, everything had just died and you're seriously taking some of the clean animals and, and you're gonna kill them? You're gonna do a burnt offering? You're gonna have a barbecue? What the hell, man? You gotta repopulate the earth. You wouldn't kill one animal if you was trying to repopulate there. But you're going to do a burn. This guy got to have his sacrifice. Got to have some blood left. Mm -hmm. Yes, just got to have it. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. The Lord, sm the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. This sounds like remorse. First of all, your God just got anthropomorph anthropomorphized. He smelled. You have to have a nose to smell. You have to have all the little um, senses in your nose to smell. You got to have a human body, a fleshly body to smell. This God is smelling the barbecue and found it pleasing. Like, man, mm. Noah just killed a pig, put it on that spit. That thing smelled good. Oh, oh, and an oxen. Oh, and he, oh, he put some chicken. Y'all know how God love his chicken. He put some chicken on there. Noah doing up that cute. That why? Got that barbecue going out, boy. That what he did. You gotta be from Atlanta, really understand that part. <laughs> or oh, the dirty south. That boy, boy. That boy, that thing down, 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 down. Y'all know what it's done by now. You know, I threw that down right there. That boy be on that cue like, ah. He on the barbecue doing real well. But never again will I curse the ground. See, he cursed the ground because of humans because of Cain early on. But now he's saying he's not going to curse the ground. But see, it was your curse of the ground from Cain that caused the scarcity of plant life on the planet. And since you are telling the people they can only eat plant life, it's your fault that you cursed the ground. But now you're feeling remorseful because you cursed Cain and by that way cursed everybody and created this fighting for food and survival, which is what people and animals would naturally do anyway. So it's kind of all your fault. So yeah, I guess you see, this guy should feel remorseful. But God is feeling remorseful because he's never going to do it. Even though every, 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 every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. Damn. What well, damn. Everything. So all of y'all, every thought. So when I see my kids and I hug them, I'm having evil inclinations. When I see a homeless person and I give something to him, food or money, I'm having an in evil inclination. When, 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 I, when I hug my lady, I'm having an evil inclination. When we're making love, we're having an evil inclination. Uh, when I give someone a job, I'm having an evil inclination. When I'm at a wedding, evil inclination. At a funeral, evil inclination. At a sporting event, evil inclination. Damn, everywhere I go that I think I'm doing good, I think I'm feeling good or thinking good. Nope. According to your Bible, everything from every, it says every. And all means all and that's all all means. It's evil. God really has a low opinion of us. So 
why even have us here? Poof us all away. That makes no sense. But I know it's a lie. Because I know the people listening right now, y'all do a lot of good things. People take care of people. People do well with people. Every inclination of your heart is not evil. And the people back then did good things for one another. So every inclination is not evil. A mother was taking care of their children. A father was taking care of his family. You're not evil. But this book will make you think that you are, that you're worthless. And never again will I destroy every creature as I have done. Yeah, you're remorseful because you messed up, dude. You messed up. That was wrong. That was wrong and you know it. So you want me to worship a God who's supposed to be perfect, but sure, show, sure shows that he's not. He said, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Uh, well, he did say as long as the earth endures, but you could go both ways with that. We know that eventually our sun will grow large enough that it will pretty much first make Earth into like Venus, where there's so much humidity that nothing we, we won't be able to live. We got to get it. We going to hopefully Mars has an atmosphere by then. We know that the Earth will become a red giant even bigger. That one day, I mean, the sun will become a red giant. That one day, that we'll be a desert and be scorching hot like Mercury, and Mercury won't even exist. It'll have been part absorbed by the sun by then. So the earth is not going to always endure. But he's going to make sure that seed times and harvest and all that. Now let's say, but none of that has anything to do with God though. That's cosmology. God has nothing to do with that. That's because of the earth's placement in proximity to the sun and the moon. But the moon is moving farther away from the earth. So one day the tides will not move as much as they do. So that would change our entire ecosystem. So... I can see what he's saying, but at the same time, that's not God. That's just science, so I don't. It doesn't make any sense. And y'all, this book just doesn't. There are so many. Uh, we know that this is a copy of the Atrahesis when Zua Sutra was, as we talked about in the last video, Zua Sutra uh, had the same story where his father uh, Inky came and told him to build a boat and put every seed of every animal on the boat. So this, it doesn't make sense. So we see how this book has so many things wrong with it. That if you were writing it back then, it may have made sense to you because your worldview, your world knowledge was smaller. We know more about the planet, more about nature, and more about cosmology. So we can understand, we wouldn't write this book today. If you was writing this book today, you wouldn't say it that way. You would never say that they covered the highest mountaintop because you know a boat can't survive at that height level, at that altitude. So we would never say that. But these people didn't know that. So they wrote it based on their knowledge of the earth. So we n cannot say that. We know this is a fairy tale. And we know that every inclination of your heart is not evil. We know this is just a fairy tale. It's almost like you want to scare kids or something. It's a, it's a boogeyman story. Hey, you, you don't act right. God going God to come kill you again. Gonna kill you. But he said he ain't going to. He felt remorseful. So, y'all, I apologize for missing Tuesday. Hopefully, I won't miss this upcoming Tuesday. I plan on having someone in the lounge so that I can step away for a couple of, you know, an hour, hour and a half. Do our live next week where we're going to do 9 and 10 where we're going to show in 9 and 10 how actually unrighteous Noah was. And if that was, but if that was the most righteous person, person, well, hell, in God's eyes, it would have been the most righteous person because every damn thing you do is evil. Every inclination of your heart from childhood is evil. But I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.